Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Wargame. Before I kick off today's game, I wanted to go over a few things. Uh, one of which is that I'm receiving a couple of comments saying, uh, Hey, how the fuck are you, basically, uh, to be discussing these games, to be giving tips to noobs? Uh, who the hell are you? Uh, and then later, the same guy commented, Hey, um, I just watched this in this game and you play it like shit, so how the fuck do you proclaim you're a pro player and who the hell are you giving advice to noobs? Um, I never proclaimed that I'm a pro player. I keep proclaiming that I am an average, if not maybe slightly above average player, and nothing more. I just happen to have a YouTube channel and I happen to do war game videos. The other interesting thing is, when you challenge those people, and I do this in the comments, maybe I'm feeding the trolls, maybe not, whatever. When I'm asking these people, hey, um, if you're shit-talking me, then that kind of implies that you are uh, above me. Skill-wise, stats-wise, whatever. You're supposedly a better player. So, show me a replay. Send me something and I'll happily have a look at it and learn from it. And suddenly they fall silent. You hear absolutely nothing once you throw out a challenge like that. So, once more, live and in color, I am not a pro player in this game. I make mistakes every game I play. Every game I try to learn something, either from my own mistakes or from how the enemy played and outplayed me. And that is basically all. <laughs> I am not a pro player. I just cover these war game videos and people seem to enjoy them from time to time. Anyway, with that out of the way, welcome to Death Row. Um, except that this is Bloody Ridge. See? First mistake. Uh, that was not even intentional. This is Bloody Ridge. It is not quite a tactical in the sense that you can only buy two units. People could actually buy a few more. Um, I think we started out with 500 points each. Something in that region. Now, I am on the enemy team, together with Sparky and Etis. The three of us were uh, trying to cover the middle area, especially Etis and Sparky did a lot of work over here. And I was playing like a donkey, so I'm not going to be playing, or not going to be showing my own replay. Uh, if you want to see me play like a donkey, just watch every second game that I upload. Of my own gameplay, that is. Um, the guy that I'm covering over here, and you're not going to see him throw out any units at first, is MiG29913. He lives up to his nickname, because those are the units that he very much favors. And no, these are not his. These units are from Lionic. And they are doing an air patrol. Which for me was bad news, because I was playing a Blue 4, uh, to be exact, US airborne deck. But it was not exactly an airborne deck that was suited to this map. I uh, came in very late into the game and I quickly had to select a deck. And yes, I know, I'm third in the list, but uh, you know how these things go. I entered the lobby, didn't pick a deck in time, and all of a sudden I was like, oh shit, uh, it's starting, click. And the deck that I've picked is a supporting deck. Not a support deck, don't get me wrong. But it's a US deck, US airborne deck, that's supposed to be taking out high value targets. And it is not designed to fight around enemy fighters. So I have no Tomcats, I have no fighters. Simply because on a map like Wands and Harbor, somebody else usually has Patriots or some other form of air defense. And I was going with a focus on helicopters and with a focus on the Nighthawk and other uh, high-value snipers. And that's why my particular deck did not have anything that could counter this guy's units, MiG-29-913. Now, he starts off slow. Um, I mean, the whole game starts off slow. Everybody's just deploying their units. And right now it's interesting to see how little Red actually had. Because they only had two Twarties, but no real optics for them. They were just spotting for themselves. They do have a group of Eriks here on the right. And, of course, some units skirmishing on the left, but no recon here. Which makes it exceptionally risky for these Twarties to be operating like this, without any form of an escort. Now, we finally have a couple of, and they already evac units from MiG-29-913, and that is their own fighters, or his own fighters. Or, well, for all I know, her own fighters. Who knows? Um, I don't know if there's any females playing this game, but uh, if there are, <laughs> chime in in the comments, and <laughs> we can have some fun. 
Um, anyway, this guy is keeping his MiG-9 or MiG-29s on air patrol. They have a lot of range. They don't need to be flying over Chiriton. Because the further forward you go, the more the risk increases for your airplanes to get shot down. Over on the right, we have a bit of an incursion over here. Uh, Trump, yes, believe it or not, Trump is flying his MH60L DAPs. And they are about to have a really bad time against the Eriks over here. But the Eriks similarly could be at risk. Because the DAPs usually take no prisoners with those uh, very dangerous twin M230s. So it's going to be a bit of a cat and mouse game over here to see if they can get the kill. See, there's the missile going out, but there's the DAPs firing back. Fortunately, it seems like this recon squad is the one that takes most of the damage, or at least causes most of the distraction. And this is the result of a DAP actually doing damage. You instantly lose nine guys from your squad. So that's the DAPs over there dead. Uh, aside from that, there's not a whole lot going on here. Over on the left, the battle was definitely more interesting. Um, not only because I was operating here. Anyway, uh, MiG-29 got his first kill. That was a 120-point aircraft. I'm not exactly sure what it was. But you want to be preventing your own Vet4 infantry from getting bombed here, of course. Now, another interesting thing here is that they were just using Proletary and uh, the... Um, I'm just going to take a stab at this. The Mehani Zovana, um, if I'm not mistaken, just regular troops with an Ultimate M56, which is very inaccurate. These guys are not exactly at the same level as uh, the Corps Mariniers over here. But what I was expecting over here is Russian Spatsnaz, or similar, Chinese Li Jian. Those guys can be very, very critical against uh, the Corps Mariniers. Do a load of damage, but so far I'm not seeing them. Now once again, the MiGs fly out, and let me just pause this for a second. These are the stats, in case you don't know these units too well. They have two fire-and-forget missiles at a range of almost 8 kilometers with a very good accuracy. Between the two of them, they throw out four, and you really only need two hits to actually kill any other aircraft. And since they're fire-and-forget, it's you fire them and you immediately evac, which incredibly or which very much reduces the risk of your own aircraft being shot down. If a missile does come your way, you still have 40% ECM, and that is going to throw those missiles off. It's not a guarantee. Those MiG-29s are not invulnerable, but they can definitely make life pretty damn hard on Blue 4 aircraft. Now, Atez is flying in with um, Hero GR-7. At this point, I think MiG-29's aircraft were on cooldown, but Lionix ones are not. And the Vimple actually got quite a bit of damage in there, or the, the other MiG-29 with the Vimples. But I believe that the Harrier actually survived. I'm not exactly sure how, because I think at that point it was being held together by duct tape and a prayer, but seemingly the aircraft is still operational. Now at this point they are reinforcing the middle. They have a Spatsnaz Gru team, they have a Twardy, uh, they got a couple of T-72M1s, which we see coming from very far away. At this point, I think Blue knows that they're there. Now, I'm not going to switch. I'm not going to switch to neutral view. Reason being, I don't want to lose the kill count for uh, MiG-29 over here. Now, this is quite unfortunate. He did get a couple of hits, but not enough. And the Phantom's actually surviving. Which is bad news for everybody on the ground, because this whole fire is going to start burning infantry and recon vehicles alike out of the forest. But anyway, I'm not going to switch because I want to look at the kill list for MiG-29 after the game. And uh, very soon you'll be seeing why. Now at this point, there's not a whole lot going on, so let's speed things along a little bit. The Super Cobra, the Longbow, we're all falling back a little bit. Um, at this point, I'm not even sure what I was operating with, in case you're looking for my particular units, but I don't think it was very spectacular. Etaz was over here with a Challenger 2. Sparky was backing him up with a Leopard 2A5, if I'm not mistaken. Now, unfortunately, the Challenger 2 is getting heavily pushed by those T-72s. There's not that much that we can do about it. And there goes... Uh, something else. That's not the Challenger 2. <laughs> there goes something else. 
The Challenger 2 hopefully was able to fall back far enough into the forest. And here comes the Leopard 2A5. This one gets pretty good flanking shots on the first couple of T-72s. The other one does not quite know what to angle against, but even if it does angle, it doesn't really matter, because the Leopard 2A5 has him dead to rights. Now once again, the Air Patrol from MiG-29 is operational. He's just waiting for stuff to get flying over his airspace. He also has a couple of Ito 96s, both radar guided, and this is part of what I think he is building as a trap. If there are fighters from blue, whatever player they are, coming for their fighters, so for, for his fighters, those MiG-29s, they will at some point have to fly over the Ito 96, which will shoot back at them with a very dangerous missile. And between these missiles and the missiles which are mounted on the aircraft, you're going to be getting quite a lot of damage in. And your kill chance is actually going up quite a bit. Now, the game is still pretty even. 1600 for blue, near enough, and 1070 for red. Uh, blue has one more sector than red in the form of Fedor, so blue is going to be getting a little bit more in the sense of income, which, um, if you let this go on for long enough, can snowball, and that can mean that blue will be throwing out more units. That does not, however, necessarily mean that blue will win. Because this is not a conquest, this is a tactical destruction match. Which means that all the units that you kill, they are valuable. All the units that you lose give points to the enemy, and if you just throw out units one after the other, using that extra income, that can cost you. Now, I'm finally flying over with one of my own aircraft. Um, which I think got shot down. I'm not even sure where it went. Ah, there it is again, the Raven. And the Raven is having an unfortunate run-in with the MiG-29s. A very unfortunate run-in, and he kills my uh, Raven over there. Now, with the airspace firmly under control, the SU-27 flies in, and while the Challenger was technically no longer spotted, this thing fires fire-and-forget missiles. And they are absolutely deadly. 30 AP each. A Challenger 2 is the most heavily armored tank on the battlefield, but even that is a bit much for the Challenger. And with a bit of fancy flying, the SU-27 was about to make it out, but then the Gripen comes in and finally gets the kill. So the Leopard 2A5 is at this point not at any grave risk from another SU-27M, unless another player is actually flying one of those things in. Now, so far, MiG-29 has scored 448 points. His only actual units on the battlefield are a command vehicle, a couple of uh, artillery units, and some AA. The AA, however, is, you could argue, quite at risk. Not just because they have been firing, but also because this whole front line is not very strong. Over here we got a flank going on with a couple of frogs, which is immediately getting detected by the, I think, the Hera 2, and the Gamma looks like he's very interested in taking that down. Unfortunately, the Iglas won't be strong enough. <laughs> if they hit, <laughs> they don't hit. Both missiles actually missed, and that means that these frogs, if they continue pushing, are actually a pretty substantial risk to these Gammas, the Gazella and the Hera. Because these guys are just armed with Brownings, whereas these are armed with miniguns. So at this point, the helicopters are forced to withdraw. But there is a Scratchet coming up with additional anti-air infantry, and this could pose a really big risk to the frogs. Because they might be able to stand up to the helicopters, but against a, a ZU-23-2 with accompanying infantry, it's going to be a whole different issue. Now over here, this... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened here. Um, I saw these things disappear at some point. But for some reason, Yuva brought his Uragans so far forward... That an HGM from the town could have killed these 120 point units. Maybe he was sending something else forward and he suddenly or he, he accidentally had these things selected. I don't know. But I was very surprised when I saw a couple of Uragans leaving the battlefield. And unfortunately, I was not quite in a position to take them down. But it was interesting to see these things this close to the front line. 
Anyway, points wise, 2345 for blue, 1940 for red. We're still very, very even. Let's speed things along because I want to see a couple more kills from uh, MiG-29 over here. At this point, he's no longer just using his airplanes. He also has the Talak-91. He's not using those next to a FOB because they don't have to be. They got quite the uh, spacious interior ammunition supply. 60 rounds between the two of them. Fire a couple of rounds and relocate, making sure he's not that likely to get hit. Speaking of getting hit, a couple of MiG-29s once again. This time around scoring a 135 point aircraft kill. And that, I think, is a Hornet of mine. An F-18, but the game doesn't quite want to let me show it. I think that's a dead Hornet that I had sent in to deal with a tank over here. I believe the tank might be dead, but not due to my killing. I actually did not get the kill there. But I did lose the aircraft. So as I said, playing like a donkey. I am not a pro player. I'm not sure how many times I have to proclaim this. Anyway, the Talak 91s are now aiming for what seems to be the last known position of either anti-air or artillery, or just units which are trying to move up. And by keeping a little bit of damage on those guys, we're either being forced to repair or to fall back or both. At least making sure that we're not going to be pushing up anymore. Talak 91 firing another salvo. This time around slightly behind the forest, seemingly not getting any kills though, and immediately relocating. Note how he is not sticking around. Counter battery is a very real risk, and you gotta keep these things moving, and that's exactly what he's doing. Now my Nighthawk flies in, I believe it does get a decent amount of damage in. A couple of these guys got a hit. And fortunately those MiG-29s were currently not on air patrol. Otherwise, I could have lost a lot of points there. That's 150 points for a Nighthawk. And even though we were getting a decent amount of income, uh, that is still not something that you want to lose. Also, because you cannot replace it. Lo lose it, and, well, you're screwed. No more Nighthawks for you. Anyway... At this point, 733 out of the 2695 points for MiG-29. So he has about a third uh, or a fourth of the points, and he's about to get one more. Because Wugwolf throws in a Freedom Fighter. For reasons unknown. I don't know what this guy was playing at, but uh, these MiG-29s are not in the mood to take any sort of prisoners. And because of that... <laughs> You can already see them launching their missiles. I'm trying to get a good shot at that. They're launching their missiles and a freedom fighter has absolutely no way of defending itself. It has zero ECM. It cannot hope to defeat these things, especially since those AA units are also still there. They're not even active, the ITOs, but if these guys cannot pull it off, then sure enough, that freedom fighter is, uh, well, it's going to be lucky, but that's the only thing that might survive, or that might save it at this point. Here come the missiles, and there goes the Freedom Fighter for another 50 points. Not terribly expensive, but he's just, at this point, also reinforcing our idea of Red 4 air dominance. Which was true. There was just no way in hell that we were going to reclaim this airspace. A couple of Tomcats do try. And they almost get the kill on another SU-27M. There's another uh, two MiG-29s from Lionic. I've seen these guys before. And so far they were not able to get a couple of hits. But just having those flying over Constantine, you're posing enough of an air-to-air -air threat that blue, well, is not exactly favoring airstrikes. Which, of course, is going to help. Blue versus red, 3540, 3500. Scores are very close. And at this point, I couldn't really tell you who's going to win. Red seems to have some control over this town, if you want to call these infantry squads control. They have a little bit defending the middle. They even have a T-80 UM, but for some reason or another, it's not even in cover. I don't think we can see it, we being blue, because it's behind the smoke screen, but it is risky. And over here, they got some units defending a town, but actually very, very few. Somebody even parked a T-55 recon tank inside the town. 
which seems like a really odd position to me, but maybe he has a specific plan with it. Anyway, there's another 160 point kill. Uh, that... That... What was that? That was an, uh, an, an F-16, I think. Fighting Falcon. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it was the Block 52. At some point, they shot down the Block 52. And at this point, MiG-29, out of the 30, let's say, 3,800 points, already has 1,400 scored. He still has his artillery. Uh, they're back over here, rearming. He still has his AA. And these guys apparently have been getting quite a couple of launches off. They are completely out of ammo, and they need resupplying. Resupplying is there, but it's a really risky area over here. Now, as I was saying, I'm not sure who's going to be pushing where. Of course, Blue keeps trying it over here in the town. Because this guy with his Corps Mariniers just seems hell-bent on pushing out everybody from this town. Over here, Red has a good presence, so there's no way to flank through these hills. At least not for Blue. But for red, it could be similarly different, or difficult, because you are going to have a really hard time trying to push up to that town. It's going to cost you a lot of smoke in order to get that done. And blue is also pushing in a couple of transports and probably escorting infantry over here. So these are definitely really quite hard areas to push through. So as is quite common, it is a bit of a standoff. There is no real player who can say, yeah, I'm going to push here and I'm going to win that area. We're just all waiting for the enemy to slip up, to make a mistake. Now, uh, in case you're wondering where they're clustering this forest, um, I am about as clueless as you are about that. I think whoever was using cluster might be thinking that there's a command unit which is not command infantry over here, or that there was something else that they could hit or destroy. Aside from that, yes, of course, you cannot kill units like this with cluster. Now the Spetsnaz are pushing through, they're getting some information, uh, especially information that aircraft and helicopters are not wanted here. This helicopter, however, has not quite received that notification in time, and is continuing to fly, but the automatic is not in the mood for additional helicopters patrolling his airspace, and takes it down immediately. Once again, the air patrol is up. The MiG-29s are here, and the MiG-29s are just looking for something to kill. Now, arguably, you could use these against a longbow if you really wanted to. But the only way that they could do that is with a gun run. Because those R-77s only target planes. They cannot target helicopters. But this looks like a juicy target. This Rafale CF-1. So it is going to be seeing who gets the first hit in, if they get a hit. Seems like the Rafale might be a little overwhelmed by uh, these two. And there you go, he's immediately pulling them back out. Note how he still has a load of fuel left, but he's not actually keeping them in the area for very long. I'm not sure if he was using them as a constant threat, just to see if Blue wanted to react to that, or if he was actually intercepting something. Maybe a bit of both. Just flying your fighters over Constantine, or slightly behind Constantine, is just a constant reminder to Blue, don't try it. I still have the airspace, don't try it. And that might be even more effective than continuously shooting down Blue for jets. Sure enough, shooting down Blue for jets helps. Gets you points, and points in this game mode, of course, win you the game. But if the enemy just keeps throwing planes at you, it means that you haven't exactly broken their will to throw planes at you yet. Uh, or you're dealing with somebody who is so headstrong that he thinks he can outspend you with planes. Uh, good luck doing that in that tactical. And good luck doing that with very expensive aircraft, which at some point are just going to run out. At this point, he has scored 1,472 points. Which is, at this point, just a third of his team. Ten people playing. One guy scoring one third of the points. If that's not the 80-20 rule in action, I don't know what is. In case you don't know what the 80-20 rule is, by the way, um, it states that 80% of the results usually come from 20% of the effort. 80% of points can be held by 20% of the players. 
Uh, 80% of the kills you make in a game can be held by 20% uh, of your units. Let's say a Leopard 2A5. 80% of your losses, similarly, can be caused by just a few units. Because you keep throwing stuff at them and it just does not work. Anyway, that's the 80 rule in effect. Or say the 80-20 rule in effect. And um, once you know of it, you're going to start seeing it everywhere. Now... Lineik over here and Dave Canterbury are doing quite a few airstrikes. Even Juva's pitching in. Uh, there's another MiG-29 on patrol. And we got a Jaguar A coming in. I'm not sure why you'd want to send in a seed run if you know that the enemy has three of these fighters overhead. And the Jaguar is quick to regret his actions. And unfortunately does not get a lot of time to think about what went wrong there. So that's another plane kill. So far, 1,500 points. Uh, still solidly at a third of the points by the entire team. Now, I'm not sure what those Talaks have actually been killing. Um, judging by their veterancy, I'd say they probably haven't killed much. Just maybe a few points here and there. Some infantry, some transports. and uh, Maybe not even that, but we'll look at that at the end of the game. Now, Leopard 2A5, you're playing a very dangerous game, but fortunately, there is just not a whole lot that Red has over here. So, Red 4 is just forced to withdraw. Sending over an SU-24M with a bombing run, and as you can see, there was a bit of a blue for response, but too late. There's even a Rafale pitching in, but the plane is long gone. The Rafale is, however, looking for a kill, and the Talux... Oh, sorry, the... Um, Ito 96s are probably eager to get it killed, but it just has to come a little closer. Because while they do have good range, it's not that good. I think you would need 6,000 meter range in order to hit that Rafale, or at least try and take a shot at it. So at this point, uh, Red 4 is basically leading this sector with a couple of AA units and some supply trucks. Aside from that, there is nothing here. Well, that's not entirely true. There is another group of transports and seemingly additional reinforcements, but they're not being pushed into Ivan yet. Point-wise, still very, very close. 4850, 4795. And that could change right about now as Lyonic flies in a B5. Let's see if that's going to get us some points. Yep, that, or, well, unless something else hit at the exact same time, that got him about 60 points. And red and blue are now only five points apart. That is all. There is so little difference in points here. There's still 23 minutes to play. So there's no real rush to uh, either party to try and rush forward and try to get some points. Sure enough, blue is trying it over here. A couple of AMX PRIs. And uh, of course there is this massive offensive going in here. But as I recall, um, Wugwolf over here... He was pushing in with a lot of LHV, or just reservists, but he didn't really communicate. And that smoke curtain leading into this area, I mean, it's very effective because it allowed all these transports to get in, but now they're just sitting out here in the open. Uh, and they're actually not even sitting out in the open, they're not even shooting. These guys are so panicked. And because he didn't communicate properly, we were not able to support him. Because the smoke screen was up here, the Leopard 2A5, the Leopard 2A4, what other, other tanks were over there, were not capable of supporting. So despite the fact that there are only a few Modestrelki over here, and a lot of LHV, the LHV are actually not winning it. They're actually not doing that well. Now, MiG-29 throws up his air patrol again, potentially expecting that there might also be an airstrike over here. But look at this. This is just... This is such a waste of blue four points. And sure enough, we're getting some points. 58, almost 5,900, 58, 70, 95. It's very close. It's very close. And all of this is basically throwing units away. Yes, blue is making a little bit more uh, of uh, terrain gain over here. And yes, they might get the CV. But at this point, they're also losing out on a lot of units. Now, at this point, uh, Ivan is also neutral. Because they pulled out their command vehicle. Or rather, I think it got killed. 
There's a push coming in here with a couple of Humvees. Red is definitely not in a very good spot as far as they have units. As far as they got um, points, they're doing quite well. Because they're making blue pay for a lot of this terrain. And so far, it's really working out pretty damn well. Syria coming in. Uh, it has no shortage of targets, but unfortunately, it picks the Humvee. I think it was just sent in with the idea of, I'll give you something else to shoot at later. But it went for a Humvee, <laughs> which is such a waste of one of those missiles. Oh, well. You could have easily gotten the Challenger 1 Mark III, a Challenger 2 potentially, Leopard 2A5. I mean, there is a lot of high-value material roaming around here. Uh, what already is that? Yeah, the Taloks are still firing. Here comes the Syria 30, this time around from MiG-29 himself. And I think that he might, in fact, go for a different target. There are still quite a few, but this is when they disappear. And he immediately orders the evacuation of that plane. It does take a hit, but it manages to make it out alive. But only just. Let's see if the Yak-38... No, the Yak-38 is not as lucky and immediately gets killed off. It does, however, drop its payload, and that is going to force Sparky to relocate his Panzer Grenadiers. So far, Blue is definitely making some terrain. They're gaining some, and they're also gaining some points. But this is when they start losing planes. Keep in mind, these guys are here. The Tornadoes are, however, hell-bent on destruction, pushing in directly after the MiG-29s, almost getting into range of the I-296s, and at um, this point, MiG-29 is just waiting for these guys to start turning around and making mistakes. And that happens now. They turn around. That's two tornadoes down. The Rafal pushes in as well. Gets hit, gets killed. There goes another tornado. And all of a sudden, the distance is no longer three or is no longer 500 points, but just 300. And Blue basically lost all of their fighters in a period of about 20 seconds, if that long. There is still one block 52, but one block 52 is mostly manageable. At this point, 18 minutes left, about 19, or 3,000 points, whichever happens first. Now he pushes forward his AA, expecting probably further uh, to, or further plane units which are flying over. Uh, and yes, there is an MLU, but the MLU seem to be just going for the planes over here. Not actually trying to get the kill. There is, however, a Draken. This might be an interesting target for the Itos. Even the SU-27M is pitching in. Turbine failure, there goes the plane. And just the sheer air dominance of these guys was impressive throughout this whole match. And I know that I keep switching between we being blue for and we being red for and then back. Um, I'm trying to cover this from red for's perspective, but I was on blue for... So it's easy for me to go, oh yeah, we were doing poorly. Because I was on that team. And I'm just trying to study what they're doing. Uh, what <laughs> they being red for. <laughs> and mostly they being MiG-29. At this point, he's no longer exactly at one third of his team. Uh, but he's definitely still the top player, points wise. 1587 points. He still has his I-296s. He has another I-290. This is the... Uh, the infrared version, but mostly against helicopters, not so much against the planes. But there were a couple of planes operating, or sorry, a couple of helicopters op operating here, like a longbow. And, oh look, there's another eagle. This eagle d does get a kill, and immediately gets pushed on by another couple of MiGs, and they get another 170 point kill there. Points, 8,000 blue, 7,440 for red. It is still really close. Ivan is completely lost. They're not getting in here again. Jot is looking wide open. There are a couple of T-72Bs there and a Tunguska, but once you get rid of that, Blue can just push in here from the side and immediately start wiping out high-value targets, including, potentially, the command vehicle, because it is not in cover. It's not concealed and can very quickly be destroyed. That does not leave Red without command vehicles. They still have one here. They still have one here, but it is definitely starting to be a bit of a risk. 
Oh, and there is another one here, by the way. Another UAZ, but this one similarly is not in cover. Now, Blue has been able to push over here as well. And unfortunately for Delta, it seems like Blue is pushing with a lot of just infantry and infantry warfare. Not so much anti-air warfare or anti-air infantry. They're starting to get the result of not pushing with that. As a Salamandra wipes out the Delta Force. Roland could have helped. The Roland 3 is not, well, not great against helicopters. It doesn't have that 3325. Where is it? This one. 3325. Still, it could be a severe risk to the Salamandra. Although the Salamandra, if it gets lucky, can land an HEGM and win that fight. It is going to come down to who gets the first couple of hits in. Now here comes a Cobra. Cobra immediately gets shot down by the Praka. Uh, the Praka unfortunately only carries two missiles. And there is another unit coming in. There's another longbow. At this point, Blue has quite a bit of anti-air going up here. And they do lose some planes. But just look at the amount of firepower that Red has in the skies. SU-27 SKs, B-5, 1 MiG-29-913, 2, 3, uh, there's a MiG-29S, there's a second one. I think that covers just about all the planes, but holy shit, that's a lot of firepower. Blue, sitting on 8,050, sorry, 8,750, red on 8,095, 15 minutes left. Blue is working on holding Cheriton, or, well, trying to maintain their foothold. But they still have to contend with a whole bunch of VDV, and the VDV with their vampires are absolutely lethal to transports. And to challengers alike. But they seem a little preoccupied with getting rid of the Panzer Grenadiers and then the Fusiliers. There goes another kill. These guys from uh, Nick are exceptionally <laughs> handy. Look at the amount of kills that they're getting, left, right and center. Infantry, vehicles, logistics units, it doesn't matter. We're just getting everything killed. Seems like we got another fast mover from blue, another Gripen. SU-27 does not quite get a line of sight on that. It's too far away. And this one gets evac'd in proper fashion. Now, almost 9,000 for blue, almost 9,000 for red too. This can still go either way. And of course, yes, I know what is going to happen at the end of the game. But I'm trying to keep it interesting. I'm trying to keep it as an entertaining game. The MiG-29s are once again on air patrol. It's just waiting for somebody to actually send an airplane. And there is somebody who does. And they do get punished for it. There goes another Block 52. Or similar. At least it was an F-16. Now at this point, I think that I might be uh, more effective with my longbow. And I'm trying to push in, and the i 90 very much disagrees with that decision, and is extremely vocal about it. <laughs> and immediately wipes out the longbow. I was quite pissed about that. Another aircraft gets killed for 130 points. And at this point, Red is leading. 92-10 versus 91-30. They don't have to get all the kills. They don't have to get, or well, they're going to get to 10,000 probably. The bigger question is, who's going to win? Because you need about 10% difference in points in order to win. And that means that the more observant among you already know at this point what is going to happen. It's going to be a draw. There is no way that either team is going to be able to get enough of a point margin to get the win. Even if it's a minor victory. The only other way that I would see for either team to win is to get all of the other CV killed. Every single one. That's, however, going to be quite a challenge because there's one, two, three Red Force CV still in existence and a fourth one over here and a fifth one over there. So they're all deep behind enemy lines. Well, for Blue, that is. And it's going to be very hard for Blue 4 to get all of the kills. Despite the fact that they conquered more of the map, it doesn't really matter. Red made them pay for basically every inch that they pushed through, especially this town. And considering that there's still a Red for transport getting a Blue 4 unit killed, I'd say that that means that Red still has really good control over this town. I mean, sure enough, they 
very, very nearly lost it. But at this point, they still have it, more or less. Points, 96.20 for blue, 95.60 for red. And at this point, we're just waiting for the last possible few kills. And it seems like the guy over here, Wugwolf, is looking forward to donating a couple more planes. Uh, he sends in his almost his entire Air Force, Freedom Fighters and MLUs. And while these guys are definitely capable of shooting down a lot of aircraft, they only need 100 more points, red that is. At this point, MiG-29 goes for a final show of air superiority with the MiG-913s, uh, another two MiG-913s and an F-18, so it is just a full-on air show over here. And if the game actually wants to cooperate with me here, I might be able to get a good shot of that too. Just look at that. All that air warfare. I think that Wargame Red Dragon still has one of the best depictions of this. Just the way that the air combat looks, I think that really, really looks good. Anyway, 9900 for either team. And that's when somebody on blue gets the last kill. But it is too late. It is a draw. Now, uh, to get all the haters out of the way. Yes, I got to a negative score of 40 points. I was feeding there. I hope you're happy. Uh, and, of course, I am looking forward to seeing your, super your superior gameplay. Link down below in the description. Now, we were following MiG-29-913. Zero losses. None. Nothing. He played with artillery, he played with AA, and look at the amount of planes that he got killed. Let's start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think that's the whole count of it. Thirteen planes and a longbow. Yeah, that's pretty much it. The Taluk 91, as I predicted, did not get a lot of damage in, or a lot, not, well, that's not, not true. It didn't get a lot of kills. It got the Stormer. Um, did the other one get anything? Yeah, the other one got a couple of Falsch Omega 90, an Avenger, and a resupply unit or two, and that's it. That's all. Anyway, extremely well done to MiG-29. Uh, killing high-value units... Dominating the airspace, and of course he didn't quite do this alone. Yuva and Lionic also dominated the airspace. But he just dominated a little bit more efficiently. Or he was able to claim the kills that other people's uh, other people's aircraft softened up for him. Lionic, 712, 770, and the other airborne player, uh, 1222 versus 975. Well done to these guys. Hope you enjoyed the replay. If you have a replay of your own that you think I should take a look at, then by all means send it in. There's a link down below in the description. Please make sure it is not an hour long. Uh, I draw the line at about 45 minutes. Because people just don't watch 45 minutes videos or more. Uh, XCOM being the exception. And of course, sure enough, there will be a couple of diehards uh, among you who are still watching at this point And who will go, oh, no, 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 I watch 60 minute videos. Yeah, but you're the exception. Uh, you're part of the minority, or, well, yeah, part of the minority that's dragging up the uh, other minority, which only watches the first five minutes. On average, my work and videos get about 12 minutes of view time. So, sure enough, I could talk for 60 minutes, but it would still only get about 12 minutes of view time. Anyway, if you have a replay, send it in, link down below in the description. If you like my content, then please consider becoming a Patreon because I also host once a month a Patreon night for Patreons only. And that's when you can get into a game with me. Link for Patreon also down below in the description. All right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good Monday and I shall see you guys soon for more videos.